Welcome to Electron Online. Here's the same example we showed you in the previous video, but here we're going to solve it using the method of sections. What we've done here is we again have a bridge that's 50 meters long. The height here was determined using the tangent of the angle theta, 7.2169 meters. Notice I have one section here, I have one section there, so when I cut it off over here, we end up with the left portion of the bridge like this. When we cut it over here, we have the left portion of the bridge right here. Notice that this allows us to find force BC, force CE, and force DE. And when we take that section, we can find force CD and force DE. We have the same force here as we did have there, so once we find it there, we don't have to look for it over there anymore. So let's start with the upper section right there by cutting it off here. We remove that portion of the beam, or I should say the bridge structure. Notice though that here we have a force of compression, which means the force pushes against the joint this way, even though we've drawn the direction of the force this way, which means when we find the result value for FCD, we'll get a negative value indicating that really the force acts in the opposite direction. We can see here that this beam is under tension, meaning the forces pull away from the joints in both directions here, which means that we have the correct direction with the arrow here, which means that when we find this result, we'll get a positive value. Again, it doesn't matter. The normal way of doing it is simply by drawing vectors away from the joints that are exposed when the other portion of the section is removed. Let's go ahead and try to find FDE by putting our pivot point right over here at C. So we'll put a pivot point over here and we'll say the sum of the moments about C must add up to zero. Now just simply add up all the moments. The first one is going to be this one right here, the 5,000 Newton force that gives us a clockwise moment about point C. That's a negative moment minus 5,000 Newtons. And the distance from there to there, I should say from there to there, the line of action of force to the pivot point, that would be 25 meters plus 12 and a half or 37 and a half meters. We have the 10,000 Newton force acting this way, which gives us a counterclockwise moment, that's plus 10,000 Newtons. Multiply times the distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, that would be 12 and a half meters. Notice that we have the sections coordinated in 12 and a half meter sections, so 12.5 meters. And anything else here? Yes, now we have force DE, which gives us a counterclockwise torque, that's plus force DE times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point. That's this distance right here. That's the height which we're given here at 7.2169 meters. 7.2169 meters. Notice I kept some extra significant figures. Well, they're not really so significant, just so we don't have a rounding error, which means when we move everything else to the other side, it changes signs. We'll turn the equation around. We get FDE multiplied times 7.2169 meters is equal to, when we move this to the other side, it becomes positive, 5,000 newtons times 37.5 meters minus, because when we move this across, it becomes minus 10,000 newtons times 12.5 meters. And then if we divide both sides by the coefficient here, the 7.2169 meters, we should get the right answer. Let's see what we get. So that's 5,000 times 37.5 minus 10,000 times 12.5. And then we divide that by 7.2169 equals, and we get a value of FDE equal to 8,000 660 newtons. So quick check showed us that that's the exact same value we got on the previous video using the different method. So it looks like we're on the right track. Next, we're going to try to find FCD. For that, we'll put our pivot point right there, which eliminates these two forces. We only will have these two forces to contend with. So we say the sum of the moments about point E should add up to zero, which is equal to, we have this force right here, gives us a clockwise moment that's a negative 5,000 newtons, multiplied times the distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, 
that would be a distance of 25 meters. And this force here gives us a clockwise motion, or a clockwise moment, I should say, that would be minus FCD multiplied times the perpendicular distance from the line of action force to the pivot point. Now, the better thing to do is this, is saying that this force acts on this point right there, and if we then take the vertical component, which would be FCD times a cosine of 60 degrees, there, then we can say that it, we take this component right here acting over this distance of 25 meters. So it would be FCD times the cosine of 60 degrees multiplied times the distance of 25 meters. Solving that for FCD, move this to the other side, we get FCD multiplied times the cosine of 60, which would be 1 half times 25 meters is equal to the negative 5,000 newtons times 25 meters. Right away we can see that we cancel out 25 meters, multiply both sides by 2, we get FCD is equal to minus 10,000 newtons. Now notice the reason why we got a negative again, that's because we have the direction this way, it's really under compression, the force is actually in the opposite direction, so it's a force of compression, and it has a magnitude of 10,000 newtons. So at this point, we have both of these correct. Now let's move over here. Now we're going to do it again, but now we have a different section right there. This is the remaining section that we have. We have the three forces emanating from the two joints that are part of the section that's remaining. Notice we already have the value for F, FDE, which is 8,660 newtons. And the direction here is correct force of tension. Now we need to find, we need to find, let's uh, start out by finding FBC. To find FBC I'm going to put my pivot point right there. That will eliminate all these forces right here, which only leaves this force and that force right there. So let's go ahead and do that. The moment, the sum of the moments about point E must equal zero. This gives us a clockwise moment, that's a negative moment, minus 5,000 newtons times this distance right here, which is 25 meters. And then we have this force right here. Again, it's drawn as if it's a force of tension, which we know it's a force of compression, so we expect a negative answer again, because we realize it's the opposite direction, but we'll follow this technique right here. We have plus, or let's say, no, minus, because it gives us a clockwise moment, minus FBC times the distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, the perpendicular distance here is h, and h was 7.2169 meters. 7.2169 meters, which means that FBC, when we move to the other side, the equal sign becomes positive. FBC multiplied times 7.2169 meters equals a negative 5,000 meters, or newtons, times 25 meters, now we divide both sides by the 7.2169 meters, and that should give us FBC. So 5,000 times 25 divided by 7.2169 equals, and it gives us a force of minus 17,320 newtons. Again, the minus indicates that the direction is actually in the opposite direction. This is FBC, so it's actually a force of compression, and the magnitude is 17,320 newtons. Only one force left to find, so this is 17,320 newtons. Now we still want to find FCE. To find that force, we need to put a pivot point somewhere else. Hmm, that's a good place. And I don't have a lot of board space, so let's see here. What can we do? Well, I'm going to pick it right here. Or, better yet, let's pick it right here. If I pick it here, I can only eliminate this force and that force. I will eliminate two forces by picking the pivot point at A. So let's do that. I need to carve out a little board space here, so let me start working over here. The sum of the moments about point A must add up to zero, which is equal to 
So I don't have to count this force FDE, I don't have to count this force right here, but I do have to count FBC. It gives me a clockwise moment, that's a negative moment, so it's equal to minus FBC, which is 17,320 newtons, because I'm following this direction right here. Ooh, but now we have to be careful. Now we have to be careful. Remember that if I have the arrow drawn like this, I get a negative value. So I need to put the negative value in there to make sure I don't have a sign problem. So I have a negative moment, but it's a negative times a negative. So it's actually a positive quantity. So it's positive 17,320 newtons. Let me show you again what I just did. Based upon the direction of this arrow, I have a negative 17,320 newton force pulling on this, on this point, point B. That would give me a clockwise moment, which is a negative moment. So a negative moment times a negative value gives me a positive moment. And that's actually what we're getting there because we know in actuality the force is in this direction. So there we're good. About this point, I have this force right here, which gives me a clockwise moment. That gives me a negative. Oh, I have to multiply this almost forgot, multiply this times the distance, 7.2169 meters. So there's my moment. Now I have a negative 10,000 newtons. So this force right here gives me a clockwise moment. That's a negative moment times the distance of 25 meters. And now we have one force left right here. Hmm. But what I can do is I can take the vertical component. There we go. Since this angle here is 30 degrees, then this angle here must be 60 degrees. And this here is FCE times the cosine of 60 degrees. So this gives me a counterclockwise moment. That's a positive moment. So we get plus FCE times the cosine of 60 degrees. That's the vertical component of FCE. And it's acting at a distance of 25 meters from my pivot point and that would be times 25 meters. So I have zero equals this, minus this, plus that. Which means I can set this equal when I move this over to, to the other side. So we have FCE times the cosine of 60 degrees. Well, the cosine of 60 degrees, let me just write it as one half. That's one half times 25 meters equals. So we have this equals. Let's move that to the other side. It becomes a positive. 10,000 newtons times 25 meters. And then move this to the other side becomes a negative 17,320 newtons times a distance of 7.2169 meters. Then if I divide both sides by 1 half times 25 meters, which is 12.5 meters, that will give me the magnitude of force FCE. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So 10,000 times 25 is 250,000 minus 17,320 times 7.2169 and divide that by 12.5 and I get exactly 10,000 newtons and I get a positive 10,000 newtons. So this is equal to a positive 10,000 newtons Let's see here, 7 times 17, that's, yes, I did. All right, so positive 10,000 newtons, and we're finding the force FCE. FCE is this force right here. It's a force of tension, meaning it's pulling away from the joint, and that's the way we have drawn it right here. Therefore, we get a positive value. So now we also have this value here, 10,000 newtons, and that allows us to say we have found the force on all the joints or all the members, I should say, of the bridge structure. So minus 17,320 newtons because it's really a force of compression working in this direction. We have a 10,000 newton force there, an 8,660 8, newton force here, and FCD as we found that would be 10,000 newtons in this member right there. And that's how we use the method of sections to find the forces on the various members in the bridge. And that's how we do it.